Hello everyone, this is Bentley, and today I want to address a question that a lot of YouTubers frankly get all the time. More recently I've had kind of a longer conversation about this with a, a viewer on the channel, and that is kind of a my, my fish is sick, what do I do, comboed with what medicine do I keep? So, my philosophy on medicine for fish has changed over the last four years. But before I dive into that, let's talk about some of the stuff I keep around and why I keep it around. So, the first thing that I keep around is kind of lovingly known as the Aquarium Co-op Medicine Trio, and that's General Cure, which is an antiparasitic. You notice I get them by the big tins, I don't do the little ones. This is just so that I have a supply for roughly about a year and a half is about how long. This will last with fish quarantining. I'm getting less fish nowadays. It actually lasts close to two years. Uh, erythromycin, which is an antibacterial. One thing that should be noted about erythromycin is that this only treats gram-positive bacteria. I'm going to try not to go too sciencey, but the basics are this. You have gram-positive and gram-negative, and more commonly, the bacterial, the bad bacterial issues we're going to run into with fish are gram-negative. So erythromycin doesn't get all of them, but where erythromycin is pretty effective tends to be on some of the most common stress bacteria caused when we get our fish in from shipping and going to stores and things like that. If you don't have a store that does its own quarantine, that's where this can be pretty handy. The last part of the, the trio, so to speak, from Aquarium Co-op is ICX, which is this is your atypical ick treatment. Right, But another thing that this is super useful for, because small amounts of methylene blue are in here, you can use a small amount of ICX to work just like methylene blue to prevent fungus on eggs. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take a small specimen container, put a very small amount of ICX in it, like two drops, just so I barely see the water start to tint colors, and then leave it be, and that helps prevent fungus on eggs. I actually use this for doing that technique far more than I do treat ick. I mentioned how that erythromycin only treats gram-positive bacteria. Let's talk about a couple of the other medicines I keep for gram-negative bacteria. This is the stuff that is more malicious and a little more common in the grand scheme of things for established tanks if something goes wrong. Uh, so one of the things I like is Seachem's ne Neoplex, which is neomycin. There's also uh, Canaplex. I, my container happens to be empty, but I usually have both. And that's canamycin. These are both antibacterials. Furin 2, which is nitrofurazole, another good one. Um, I'm not going to show it on camera because the tin is huge. But the other thing that I keep is I have this giant thing of metronidazole. That more commonly, we just call it metro. Again, that's another one in that same camp. Uh, the, the difference is with most of these, you don't want to mix them together. Like the, the med trio, you can mix them and it's all pretty safe. Most of these you want to dose on their own. Uh, Dan's Fish, for example, uses a very specific setup of medicines. I would highly suggest checking that out. I'll actually put a link uh, up in the corner to that particular video where he talks about that. But these are some of the meds I keep. I also keep um, triple sulfa. I, I don't have the package on me, but it's one of the API small packages like this. I've actually only ever used that medication once, and I bought a reasonable amount of it thinking I would need more than I actually did. So I do have it around, but I almost never use it. The last like major medication that I keep around, and it's going to be in a plastic bag because this is how I got it, but this is Levamisole. I cannot tell you how useful this stuff is when you need it. And this much Levamisole will last you like a small eternity. It is quite a lot. You need very, very little Levamisole. Uh, the best probably source for this right now is being Greg Sage at Select Aquatics, but there's a few other places you can get it. If you happen to have a uh, feed store that deals with livestock like uh, sheep and stuff like that, this is very common for like sh a sheep dewormer. Uh, this particular brand is called Levamed. Uh, there's, there's all sorts of stuff, but the basics are this. It is extremely good at dealing with worms uh, as far as the internal parasites are concerned, especially calamanus worms, which can be really, really detrimental if you happen to get them. I've dealt with them twice. They're a nightmare unless you have levamisole. If you have levamisole, it's actually very, very easy to deal with. And the, the way that it works is it paralyzes them and 
we'll skip the big science, but basically this stuff is really, really effective. If you're into puffers or a lot of wild caught fish and the place you're getting them, it doesn't do a very thorough quarantine treatment. This is one of your best friends for making sure that those fish don't have a parasite once you get them through your own personal quarantine. There's a couple other like small case things that I use when it comes to medication. And then let me explain. So like one is um, I, for a while I was using the new life spectrum hex shield, which is an anti-parasitic food. If I have fish that are eating, what I like to do is I'll take the pellets and I powder them up. Um, I'll just grind them up with like a mortar and pestle or in my fingers. Uh, you could use a salt grinder or something like that. I like it very powdery because sometimes the fish that are sick are not going to eat very much. They won't eat a full pellet. So if I get it powdery, they're more likely to eat it. Um, you know, it's so often when you have a bad parasite issue, and a lot of times when you notice it finally, those fish aren't really eating in the first place, and it can be very hard to treat at that point. So this isn't necessarily the most helpful, but I've had a few cases where this particular food or a similar medicated food, uh, I've been trying to find a good medicated flake, end up being quite the lifesaver. But I mentioned at the start of this that my philosophy on medicating fish has changed. So let me explain that, and then I'll tell you the medicine I really use. Four years ago, when I really got back into this hobby, anytime I saw something wrong with my fish, I would do my best to identify whether it was a bacteria or a parasite, and then I would jump straight to meds. Yeah, you know, I would test my water, and this is critical. Test your water. Test, test, test your water. And don't just look at nitrate, nitrite, ammonia. Look at your pH. Look at your hardness. Look at your temperature. Corey from Aquarium Co-op recently talked about this, how he's having issue with his goldfish, and it all came down to temperature. And he was so certain that the temperature was fine that he looked at everything else. And the mystery didn't reveal itself until finally he was like, well, I might as well check my temperature just in case. And it happened to be higher than he was expecting, and that's what was throwing his goldfish off and causing some of his health issues he was starting to see. As I got more and more experience in the hobby, I realized that a lot of the things that happen to my fish don't need medication. They need me to pay attention to the water quality. And there are a few things you can use that are a little more old school that don't really require medication and are far cheaper than medication. This isn't necessarily a medication, but in my case, because I live in Seattle where the water is extremely soft, and the particular type of fish, rainbow fish, that I like to keep, like harder water, this I almost treat like a medicine, and that is Wonder Shell. So I typically put crushed coral in my tanks to help buffer the water up to get it a little harder. Because the water is so soft here, you can deal with pH crashes in the Seattle area, and our pH can come out of the tap. It's buffered with some chemicals that'll make it seem like it's 7.6 or 7.8 out of the tap, but in 24 hours, it can crash down to like 6.2, 6.4. That's a big difference in pH for a fish, and that can cause a lot of stress. So we usually use crushed coral to get some calcium in the water, get some hardness, and help keep that pH more steady around that like 7.2, 7.4 range. If I'm seeing some kind of water quality issue and I need to kind of quickly do things as opposed to how it will slowly take crushed coral to dissolve, Wonder Shell. Now, they make some interesting claims on this product. I'm not going to say that they work, but what I love about this product is that it gives a nice mineral base to any of those particular fish that need it. And more importantly, I can put a small one of these in a big tank like this after every water change and it's really okay because the water that I have is so soft it just acts as a remineralizer. You know you could use a mineralizer of course like salty shrimp or something like that but these are pretty brain dead simple. I just huck one in the tank and forget about it. I don't even have to worry about really getting a perfect dose. I just know that one every so often is good or a little one every big water change, it's going to balance everything out, and it's going to make my fish a lot happier. But that's not really a medicine. Let's talk about the real medicine. The medicine I use the most. If I'm having trouble with my fish, I have one go-to. And honestly, it almost always works. Now, this isn't the exact stuff I use, but 
for our demonstration purposes, I don't want to pull out a five-gallon bucket, and that is salt. Now, this is just plain non-iodinized salt. Make sure you're never using iodinized salt in your fish tank. Realistically, what you should be using is sea salt, uh, kosher salt is okay. I, in particular, and I'll have a link down in the description, like using a reef salt. And the reason why is that the reef salts tend to have some extra mineral content to them that just I have noticed in my personal experience tends to be very beneficial. And a lot of that comes down to the same reason I use that wonder shell. I have extremely soft water that has almost nothing in it. So getting that little extra mineral content can really make the difference between a fish that's not doing so hot and a happy, healthy fish. The best part about salt is that it's easy to get out of the water system. It's less damaging to your fish. And more importantly, you can use salt in a variety of ways, whether that's a dip or a whole tank treatment where you're just putting in an amount. Very often we'll do what we call a medicinal dose of salt. And that is instead of doing a medication dose, which is usually a, a certain amount, uh, it's like a tablespoon every five gallons, we'll do it half that much, right? And then even more so we can cut it back. And very often what I like to do as a, just a light test to see how things are going is that amount every 20 gallons of water. And usually you can see within a day, if your fish aren't dealing with a really serious illness, you'll see your fish perk up in that small amount and that tells you, okay, add just a little bit more and it'll probably get you where you need to be to deal with whatever issue they're dealing with. Salt really is one of those things that if you go to big breeding houses, um, the people who wild collect in the Amazon, they don't have a whole massive stockpile of meds. They've got salt. Lots and lots of salt. Now, the cheapest way to buy this, of course, isn't by buying reef salt. It would be to buy rock salt and grind it down yourself. Uh, any kind of cheap sea salt, as long as it is not iodinized. Make sure it's not iodinized because the, the iodine, because the iodine that is in that salt is at a concentration where it can become toxic to your fish when we're doing the type of dosing we normally do with salt. So why? Why do I love salt and am steering farther away from all those medications? I have so many medications. Why am I steering away from those? The answer is really simple. I have noticed I am more likely to see effective curing of issues by using salt than I am by using medication. If I'm dealing with a problem and I can't, and it's not extremely obvious that it's it's a type of worm, I should use Labama salt. That's the most common. That's the one thing where it's like salt won't cure it. I really need a bed. But beyond that, I have so frequently seen that just a little salt will do wonders to my fish. And part of that is because I keep mostly rainbow fish. Of course, the big tank of guppies that are behind me and I don't keep a lot of Corydoras, which Corydoras can be very sensitive to salt, so you have to do very, very small doses. That's where that one uh, per 20 gallons dose really works. So why am I using this stuff? Why, why, why in this, if I've only observed it, but so many other people will preach, use uh, this medicine, use that medicine, why? I'm not a vet. I can't get it perfect, even if the recommended dose is scientifically studied to a certain amount. I know that continued use of those medications can be extremely damaging to our fish long term. And in the case of rainbow fish, there are certain diseases rainbow fish get that you literally just can't treat. So because of the fish I keep, I have changed my philosophy on medication. And instead of worrying so much about I've identified a disease let's treat it. I instead try to be more proactive and just get my water conditions as healthy as I can by getting good water quality, good minerals, good vitamins, good food. And when I do see something happen, usually it's telling me, oh, I kind of forget my, maybe I wasn't paying enough attention to my crushed coral. Maybe it's not, it's not quite there as much buffering is strong. I better look and harden the water a little bit. 
or check my temperature. Make sure it's not too hot because there's too much sunlight coming in over here on one of these tanks in this particular room or in another room, maybe just the, the heater over time has slowly kind of ratcheted itself up to running more than usual or it's warmer in the house because it's summer, whatever it may be, pay attention to that heat, that pH, and that hardness in the water more so than I look at like Okay, my fish is looking really skinny. It's got to be a parasite. I better just start hurling general cure into the tank. Now, to be fair, I do use medications every once in a while when I see issues. But nine times out of ten, those issues don't get resolved by medication. They get resolved by just being a little bit more active with my animal husbandry and taking better care of my fish. And it's just one of those things where I've just learned the hard way. I've had enough mistakes, I've had enough problems to where I've been able to learn the hard way. But if I were to keep specific meds, and let's ignore all the stuff I bought and say, okay, I need to keep a certain set of medications. What am I going to keep? Ickex for the eggs, mostly, but also just because when you do get ick, it's extremely effective. Levamisol, General Cure, Erythromycin, Metronidazole. There are smaller cases where I like neomycin and canamycin. However, because they're such a small case, and also they come in a very small amount as far as the easiest way to buy them for me, that I will only buy them when I absolutely know that that's what I need. And very honestly, salt usually does the trick in those cases. More importantly, what am I going to do? A good quality salt. I personally, like I said, I like reef salt, marine salt, because it has an extra mineral content, but you can get away with just sea salt from a grocery store or rock salt as long as it does not have the iodine in it. So with that being said, that's a little dive into how I approach issues with my fish health and then treat it based on the medicines that I keep. And more importantly, the way that my philosophy has changed, which is to say, I steer away from medicines a lot more than maybe I did four years ago, especially then four years ago, but maybe more. And the more and more I get into this, the more that I look at and go, I don't necessarily need that medication as often as I might have thought I did. So what I'd really like to hear from you guys in the comments, uh, what is your go-to medication? Do you Are you like me? Do you prefer salt over everything else? Or maybe just, uh, maybe you like Melifix and Pemafix? which are, you know, more natural things. They're not like medicine medicines. Uh, there's also a really great product from Brightwell called Recover, which is very similar. It's all natural. It's not medicine medicine. Um, I've tried that recently, and it's 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 quite interesting. It helped perked up some fish. But um, I'd really like to know from you guys, what do you use? What do you keep? What do you swear by? Is it salt? Is it meds? Uh, do you... Do you swear that, like you have to have levamisole that's just the thing you need maybe you think that erythromycin is the greatest thing since sliced bread tell me down in the comments i'd really love to know if you enjoy videos like this kind of peeks into the reason why i keep certain things around my my fish room or why i'm starting to not use certain things in my fish room give it a little like it really helps with the youtube algorithm maybe even share it if you've got some friends that have been dealing with sick fish recently maybe this will help them kind of find the answer for themselves. If you think that I'm a fool for not having an entire like medicine cabinet, despite the fact that my mother's a pharmacist, so I grew up around that kind of stuff, you can hit the thumbs down twice. It's okay, I'll understand. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and stay awesome. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hey, 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 hey. You guys haven't seen him in a while, huh? Look how big he's getting. It's just that end of that video thing where we thank some of the members of the Patreon people. Carrie Pitt, Ginger Graves, Cody. You guys are all awesome. We've got a lot of new members. But uh, you guys haven't seen Papa Limo in a while, so... <laughs> he's really wiggly. Although, if I get him just right... I'll do this thing later. Oh, yeah. That's a happy boy.
But yeah. That's it. I thought you guys haven't seen Papa Limo in a while, so I'm going to show you. Look how big he's getting. He's such a big boy. He's, uh, at time of filming, about two weeks from seven months old now. And he's just the handsomest boy. And then when he gets really excited, he snorts like a pig. It's super cute. But he's a corgi, so he kind of barks at everything. <laughs> Makes it very hard to film. But he's actually pretty good when I get him in a crate. He's nice and quiet. He's very... Very well trained so far, little boy, about certain things. He's not very good at other things, though. <laughs> getting him to getting him to go in his crate when you need him to. He's not a big fan. He's too smart. Aren't you, buddy? Aren't you? Say bye to everybody. Look, 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 look. Stay awesome. Good boy. Whoa, 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 whoa. Easy, Trigger.